Welcome to the Punk CX Podcast. My name is Adrian Swinsko. I'm an advisor, author, and general explorer of the service and experience space. My guests tend to have just released some interesting research. They run a company that has some interesting tech in the service and experience space. They are part of an organization that is doing some cool stuff, or they run their own business doing interesting things for both their customers and or their employees. That's enough for me. Let's get into the interview. Before we get into the interview, I'd like to give a big shout out and thanks to all of the folks at Calendly for sponsoring the podcast this month. Calendly makes scheduling meetings easy and efficient, eliminating the hassle of back and forth emails so you can get back to work. It's used by everyone from small businesses to Fortune 100 companies, and millions of people around the world rely on Calendly to close deals, build better relationships with their customers, drive customer success, and grow their businesses faster. So do check them out by following the links in the show notes. Now, let's get back into the interview. So welcome to the next edition of the Punk CX Podcast. With me today, I have Katie Christian of Calendly. How are you doing, Katie? I am well. Thank you so much for having me. You are very welcome. Now, first of all, Calendly are sponsoring the podcast this month. So first of all, I just want to say thank you very much. And now I wanted to ask you was say, well, Katie, can you give us a bit of a thumbnail sketch about you and what you do and what Calendly is up to and all these sort of things? Just basically set the scene before we dive into our conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So a little bit about myself. I am a East Coast living um, and loving, you know, person. I have a beautiful family here in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, I'm just super thankful to have had a passionate career in tech, working for some really stellar companies and seeing the Atlanta startup um, scene really grow over the past 10 years. And so I have landed at Calumny right before the pandemic hit. So I've been there close to three years now. And we have really just been focused on on serving the world through the pandemic through unique changes mm-hmm. to work and life and making sure that our customers are supported and, and their feedback is actioned. And so for us, we are on this journey to increase connections um, on, a, on a virtual and physical scale. And so for us, we create the simplest way to schedule meetings. And those can be all different types of meetings from doctor's visits to business meetings um, and Far and few in between the nooks and crannies, we'll call them. Awesome. For that, um, that's that's a little bit about myself and a little bit about Calumny. Awesome. Um, now, you talk about, I mean, I was thinking about this and I will I have my own little journey with Calendly, um, which I'll tell you about a bit later. But to set the scene around this, because I guess it's like that whole, I've talked about it. I guess some various points in the podcast kind of over the kind of years, the idea about scheduling appointments and it being part of an experience and sometimes an intrinsic part and a very important part of an experience is it can be, you can succeed or fail on, on just those kind of things. And what, what I wanted to do is just ask you to say, maybe just set the scenes around appointment setting and miss me meetings and the time it takes to schedule kind of meetings and all those different sort of things. I mean, do you have any idea or about any ideas or estimates about how much time do we waste setting up meetings? How many meetings are missed or not scheduled? How many deals are lost? Relationships, atrophy, all these different sort of things. When we have to do that manual, tell me when you're free, blah, 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 blah. And to be yeah. able to kind of like to nail in a, a you know a, an appointment in somebody's diary. Yeah. So so two key stats here. Um, on average, it takes eight back and forth emails to get a meeting scheduled. So when you think about that, um, that's immense time. And usually there's immense friction in the experience. And so by scheduling a meeting with Calendly, on average, our users are saving about 15 minutes of their time. And so when you think about how many meetings are scheduled in a week for a given professional, that can be anywhere from 15 minutes, but up to hours saved, um, spent on, you know, doing work that matters, that's going to progress their business and mm-hmm. their customer relationships forward. No, oh, nice. 15 minutes, eight emails back and forward. I mean, it crumbs, I just, I can't, it, when you toss it all up, it just kind of starts to kind of just gets, it just starts to balloon. Oh, it snowballs a hundred percent. And so when you think about the scheduling and just the amount of time that regardless of your profession, 
Um, the amount of time that you try to connect with someone, it's almost more than the time you actually spend connecting with someone. Well, that's it. I mean, and, and actually, I tell you what, it's like, I must admit, I am, I'm a bit of a convert. <laughs> um, and because how I manage my time, I was always being like, it's like, how I manage my time. And it's like, you know, and and I have a I had a way of kind of doing that and how I kind of where I focus my time and doing kind of what. But I actually and and also for the longest time, because I work off a Mac and there was and I would use iCal and and I I played around with um Calendly before and it meant I'd have to kind of move and do the kind of Google Calendar sort of thing. And then you kind of came out with the the uh, the, the iCal integration kind of recently. And I was a bit like, I'm going to have another go at that. Okay. And what's been really interesting has just been my own experience about how easy it is. Because, yeah, I have to set up meetings and I'm working with different people from different places and multiple parties and all these different sort of things. And it's become, it's just made it just like super easy. I just go, maybe we can get into that because I still haven't figured out what's the etiquette for sharing a calendar sort of like kind of invite. Um, but I, I do, that's kind of, and that's all this kind of my personal experiences is part of that sort of my interest about having you on the podcast and also my delight that you, you agreed to sponsor the podcast, because I think that actually I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to zoom in on some of these essential little bits. I mean, it's like, it's a bit like a friend of mine, James, who is a big sort of data and process improvement kind of guy. And he said to, he, he always worked for some big enterprise companies. And he said, uh, he says, he says, in my experience, he's like 90% of all problems, particularly in the service domain, tend to happen in the gaps between teams. Yeah. And I thought that's fascinating. And when I would, I would, I would probably include the sort of scheduling as part of kind of that because it's the, it's like the link right it's the oh, linkage it's the glue. um but so you i mean and building on that i guess because you currently fervently believe that the scheduling is an essential part of customer experience i mean and so if if i may can actually just kind of like to paint that sort of picture about kind of how how it, how how important how essential kind of is it and you know, so we can just get a, an understanding. So I don't, otherwise, I'll just wax on about kind of what I've how I've benefited, and you won't get a word in edgeways. And so I'm going to shut up now. Yeah. Well, when you think about the customer journey and the customer experience, you want a consistent, elevated experience, right? Mm -hmm. And and so you don't want to go from hypothetically, if we're going to the top of the funnel, the sales team, and then you move into potentially implementation, customer success thereafter. We can support interactions and then think about product, mm -hmm. right? And feedback and all of that. What is that scheduling experience that you're cascading across your business and how you interact? And so Calendly simplifies and streamlines that regardless of whether it's a, a solo meeting, me scheduling directly with you as the customer, or if I need to group in a PM and a support person all together in one meeting and making it as simple as possible for the customer to book that time. And when you talk about etiquette, there's certainly buzz around the internet about the best way to schedule meetings. We created a whole blog series attached to it. And so I'm happy to, to shoot that over to you. But really it's, um, you know, Adrian, what, what day and time works best for you? Feel free to reply with that. If it's easier, here's my Calendly link for you to schedule in real time. Mm -hmm. And so it's putting your schedule first and asking for you if you would like that or giving you the option to avoid that and go down that path. And so it's, um, I think we've moved very quick over the past couple of years and putting, you know, our own needs first and forgetting about the other person on the other end. And so when we think about, you know, etiquette and things of that nature, it's always lead with who's in front of you or who your audience is and what's best for them. And then provide the option for the shortcut. They take you up on it. Fantastic. If not, you still proceed down that path because getting time with them is the most important thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think one of the things I've found as well, and what I, I mean, it's a blindingly obvious thing is that it doesn't mean to say that you have to open up your calendar, the whole thing, because mm -hmm. actually you can block things out and that's reflected kind of there. And so you can still, you still ultimately control. This is one yeah. of my kind of like kind of things. It was my kind of initial kind of fear is like, going, here's my calendar. Kind of yeah. like you can, 
but and you can set the rules and everything else and you can get everybody to kind of uh, integrate and plugged in and stuff and and i think that was the thing is that it's you know um i think i was just being i just being pretty dumb about kind of understanding it because i was so, i was so locked into kind of like how i've done things for such a long kind of time but then when i got over the technical hurdles and then realized that actually i can manage it and then you can and then but you can flex things to kind of accommodate kind of people and stuff and it's just proven just much easier to do and as you say it take it saves so much time and 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 i guess it's not just the 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 external application but also the some of the internal stuff as well yeah so so there's quite a bit and i want to just take a quick moment to step back and say our our number one um focus is is utilizing our time wisely right we only have so much of it and so when you think about a scheduling tool there is sometimes fear involved in how much control would this would this tool have right and things yeah. like with calendar we allow you to create multiple schedules for availability. So you can have general availability with a small subset of hours, but think your VIP clients or things of that nature, you can open it up wider for them. But I think the biggest thing with Calendly is you are in full control. We just help enable and serve at a greater scale than you'd be capable of. And so that's one of the biggest where a lot of folks will say, oh, do I really have to open everything up? And we say, not at all. You could open up 15 minutes or an hour, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to do every 24 hour period in a day. And so I think that's one of the key themes that we've been on a journey to educate the world on is you're in control. We're just the vessel to help you schedule better meetings faster, yeah. right? And remove friction from the experience. And so we've been we've been focused on that, that messaging and, and sharing it out with the world. And I think, you know, folks have really captured on the virality of our product. And I think once you experience it and schedule that meeting in less than 30 seconds, people go, it was really that easy. Ah, why haven't I been using it? And you have that light bulb moment. And some for some, FOMO, the fear of missing out on all of those past meetings scheduled and the time wasted. And so I think we have quick converters once they get that first meeting scheduled and realize just it was effortless. And gosh, I should really be doing this more. I think that's going to be, I mean, I think that's, and because it's one of the things that you're, and it's an interesting perspective, but I can see how that kind of works out because you talk about, treating scheduling like a competitive a competitive advantage oh 100%. and i think that i mean it is that what you what you mean by that sort of thing about all these different sort of things and different levels and you can you, it's almost a bit like create your own um what's the word like a painter's like a palette as it were a palette of choices a hundred percent i i think ultimately it's you know, each business decides to go to market. And how do you want to go to market? What experience are you going to create for your customer base? And so whether you inject scheduling in at the top of the funnel to convert your leads or you're progressing that through all the way through to renewal calls and things of that nature, it's what do you want that to be? And sometimes we skip the scheduling experience. We don't think about it. Oh, it's, it's just going to get done. It's like, of course it can get done. But what could that experience look like? How could that be? And so I've seen some really fantastic customers insert Calendly, top of the funnel. And when those leads convert, it takes them to a routing page that's based on, you know, all of the ROI, specific case studies and things of that nature. And so they're just starting to drink, drink the champagne, if you will. I always mm-hmm. say, skip the Kool-Aid, go with champagne. Um, post-sale, when we have customer schedule with our CSMs, it routes to our blog for what's new and they can see all the new updates within the product and things of that nature. And so it's like, utilize that attention, whether it's for a minute or, or longer, redirect it somewhere and make the most out of that experience. Delight and thank them. We've had customers put landing pages where customers, if they sign up for a product meeting to give feedback, then go sign up for a gift card thereafter. And so it's, you know, all these little things to elevate the experience, just because you have to schedule a meeting doesn't mean it has to be boring or full of friction. Yeah. Right. Um, and so it's, it takes 30 seconds, but there's so much you can do in 30 seconds to surprise and delight. And I think, um, the companies that have really invested time and energy into Calendly, not only does it have this amazing external benefit, but also internally increases productivity for the reps that are utilizing, right? Um, and, and so that's a huge one as well. Yeah, because I was going to ask is like, it's is this just a sales application, external application, or is it just have much? I mean, is it scheduling just across the board? Yeah, it's it's across the entire business. And so anybody who's scheduling can truly utilize Calendly. So I'll just give examples. We have 
our sales teams, our customer experience teams. We have support, customer success implementation utilizing in there. We have our product teams utilizing. Um, and then anyone who needs to schedule meetings in, in general, but it's a, it's a cross-functional um, application that can be used really to, to just save time. And that's the number one thing we hear from our reps um, is, you know, oh, I wish there was more time to do X, Y, and Z. And, um, or this customer, you know, we haven't been able to hear back to get this meeting scheduled. It's because you've been going back and forth with these meetings. And so for a few of our customers, getting Calendly set up and implemented has allowed them to engage at a higher frequency with their customer base, right? To secure renewal calls faster than ever before and it's led to higher retention outcomes. And so while it's absolutely can, you can focus on lead to speed from a sales perspective, it is all the way across the customer journey, helping with retention as well. And, and even in the areas of product feedback and capturing that voice of customer um, at a more qualitative level, obviously we have the, the quant with all the data, but really bringing those snippets and insights internally to the business through some of these meetings that we have has been powerful. Nice. Nice. I was just thinking about it when you were talking and I was thinking about like for people that are listening, they were like, well, you know, it's like, it's kind of scheduling and stuff. And I said like, and then I was thinking about it, like, think about it this way. When we think about our customers, whoever the customers might be, if they have to queue and then they have to wait for something, mm -hmm. then that's a cause of, dissatisfaction and friction and kind of not the ideal, the optimal kind of experience. And some people will kind of say, well, sometimes cues are necessary. So you're trying to make that as kind of simple and easy as kind of possible. And that's fine. So think about it that way. So scheduling is a bit like queuing, but in a, in a, in a different sort of like perspective. But then there's also the other thing, which is a big drive within service and experience right now. And it's this idea that why don't we leverage technology to automate the simple tasks that allow us to focus on the more complex and complicated and nuanced and challenging tasks at hand? Why do we spend, we should, when we think about it from a service agent or, or, or a, a support or help desk kind of like a kind of person, and they're trying to, we're trying to help them be more efficient, more effective and things. We're trying to automate all the simple, straightforward, easy to answer sort of like stuff or easy to do stuff yeah. to allow them to focus more of their kind of time and attention on some of the more complicated things and the more, the higher value stuff, the higher mm -hmm. value interactions. And I guess what, you're, what, what I'm hearing is, and this is what I say to people that are listening, is like, this is what scheduling is doing. It's almost removing queuing. You talk about that. Eight emails back and forward in the 15 minutes, although the amount of time it takes me to write an email, it's probably kind of like more <laughs> yeah. than 15 minutes. Um, but also that sort of idea about it's in line with the whole sort of thing around leveraging techn technology to automate the simple and straightforward stuff to allow you to, to better use your time to focus on the more complicated or complex or nuanced or challenging or important or higher value yeah. sort of stuff allow you to do what you do best. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's that simple. That's, I mean, that's awesome. I mean, it's so, she's got like so many different kind of applications. I mean, I wonder if, well, one, well, can you, then this would be great. I mean, and, and you're ideally placed for this because you're, you know, head of customer success at Calendly. So you're seeing people in the weeds kind of doing their thing. Do you have a couple of examples of, clients that are using Calendly and sort of like describe to me kind of what sort of problems, what was the challenges that they were facing and how have they used Calendly um, to solve that challenge and what sort of benefit they're giving? Because they sort of like, and particularly in that service and experience sort of space, it's going kind to of bring it, it to life because then people can see what is the art of the possible as it were. Yeah. So when we think about customer experience teams and how the Calendly is elevating what they do, some of the easiest or some of those more complex tier two, tier three dev support items where you just, you nailed it right on the head a few seconds ago, where they don't want to spend time scheduling. Right. Um, so we have one customer that actually has a landing page where you can actually schedule directly based on the topic that you need help on, whether it's a Salesforce integration, an API or a webhook issue, book in real time, um, you can get on and they they treat it similarly where they have someone dedicated on each hour of the day and they have 15 to 20 minute spots allocated. And so 
instead of going to a live chat and going back and forth, it's, hey, if you have put in anything in live chat related to these keywords, they take you to a dedicated landing page where you can book in real time. And for most cases, they're actually getting on and addressing them within the hour of, of when that person goes into live chat, which is fantastic, mm-hmm. right? And so it's queuing up a, a SME, a subject matter expert to speak with those customers versus triaging through live chat. Um, they can get on and do the Zoom real time. Um, when we think about others, it's it's the simplicity of um, collective meetings and bringing teams together. And so whether it's customer success and sales going into a renewal call and making that as seamless as possible, typically there can be a lot of friction of, let me go check in Google Calendar of, is Sally available at this time? Do we have overlap? Cali allows you to surface those availabilities in real time. So you don't have to go back and forth and look at the calendar there. Um, And you get that link out to the customer and they choose. Mm -hmm. They choose what works best for them um, versus you sending only those three slots. And so I think overall, it's um, really focused on reducing the amount of time teams are spending doing that manual work and allowing them to do what they do best. And this can be quantified in, um, in, in reduction of overall time um, with customers, with on tickets to over increasing retention and things of that nature. So it's not limited really to, to any aspect of the customer journey. It just depends on how our customers are utilizing. But those are two key ways where customers are removing friction from the journey um, and just giving, serving up customers what they need in real time and allowing them to take the lead. And I think customers, once they get into the habit of scheduling that first meeting with Calendly, they begin to utilize those resources and look forward to them. And so hypothetically, if there's a change to that landing page and the support experience, they go, oh no, what happened? And they get pretty upset. And so, um, you know, guiding your customers on experience that actually delights them that they look forward to using, that they share cross-functionally is amazing because it's one that sets you up to scale long-term. And again, it removes that friction internally. So you have happier reps, which I'm a big believer in your internal team's removing the friction from their days because they do provide that better experience. And so it is this beautiful flywheel of a uh, uh, perpetuating experience on both sides of the house. But I think also you can, if you think about it, if I think about it from a, if you'd like say a customer success perspective, or like you were talking about the, um, the senior devs kind of, you know, pushing them, their availability to the front line, as it were, I guess what you're also doing is you're proactively providing your customers and your clients with the opportunity to say, I need to talk to you. And rather mm-hmm. than actually send, you know, and then you just kind of book a book a 50 minute kind of like call or kind of whatever. Say, I need to talk to you about this. And mm-hmm. rather than it being you're you're always checking in kind of with them or they have to send you an email and then you request a thing and you say like, no, I'm I there's nothing better than having a degree of certainty when so, when so you can do something and then something's just booked. Yeah, hundred percent. Like that's like that that idea around um, customers. They do things because they want to achieve certain things. They want to do certain jobs. They want to solve certain kind of problems. Um, they don't. That you know, they don't really want to kind of. They don't have a problem and go. I want to send an email and then wait. Right. Well, it's capitalizing on the moment and meeting customers where they are when they want it most. And and that's the the most important thing. We have um, a particular customer who has empowered each of their CSMs with a controlled 15 minute link. And they ask every one of their customers in their portfolio to bookmark it. Whenever they need something, instead of sending an email, they can book that link in real time. Mm -hmm. Um, and And it's those things where customers, no one likes waiting in an inbox. No one likes that, right? Um, and, and so it's really just meeting your customers where they are and and everyone, if they really want to go through that email and provide ample context, though, they certainly can. But giving our customers options, more options than they had a year ago, two years ago. And I, I think in today's world, people want options. They want to self-choose how they want to show up and when they need help. And Calendly gives, gives companies the ability to provide options in a meaningful way. Yeah, no, and I was speaking to somebody else on the podcast, uh, and it's going to be a preceding episode to this. And it's a author by the name of Jim Tincher who wrote a book called um, "It's Focused on B two B Experience." And one of the um, one of the fascinating statistics that's in the book is is the size of the B two B market compared to the B two C market. Now, B two C gets all the press and all the glamour and everything else because right. it's like the stuff that we buy and as Consumers would go out and do, buy these things, but actually, 
the B2B market, I think they were, I think it was right. I'm right in recalling saying that it's about twice as big as the B2C market. Yeah. So if you think about how big you think the the consumer space is, then the B2B is just massive. It's like at least 50%, if not kind of more bigger than the the than the um the B2C market. So it tells you the kind of the amount of activity that's in there and almost the kind of the size of the the waste problem you could say in terms of in terms of time and and productivity and all of those different sort of things um so there's a lot to a lot to run at it and 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 to to be fair b2b is also kind of way more i mean some of this stuff has been it's quite familiar booking appointments in the in the b2c space it has been for a while away it's, i mean i know i booked a, an appointment to go and see the optician at the weekend to get my eyes tested i need new glasses what can yeah, I tell you? That's fair. I'm getting it old. And that's where the whole etiquette piece comes in, right? That we touched on a little bit earlier is B2C, you're, you're comfortable scheduling appointments. And with the recent pivot of, of COVID, it's and everything going completely virtual, the best, you know, the conversations to find time. And there, of course, there was a tweet out there that called Calendly Rude and it, it you know, went on the viral storm. Um, but it's, it's all about the approach. And I, mm-hmm. I think at the end of the day, it's realizing that, the number one goal of Calendly is to help you and your customers optimize time savings, giving yeah. you time to do what you do best. And so it's it's all about the approach. It, and, and that could go for anything, regardless of meeting scheduling. Um, but it is, it's about the approach and it's about how you lead into it. And so we do spend a good bit of time um, talking to all different types of teams, whether it be sales, support, customer success, recruiting, um, all of that on, hey, this is the best way to engage with with someone and schedule a meeting, right? Um, don't just share your link and say book a time here. That mm-hmm. is quite right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so it's you know just just teaching and evolving and, and helping them be more customer centric. One of Calumny's core values is start with human. Mm-hmm. And so we we take a big um, interest in in teaching our users and really the world on on how do you best engage. What is the best way to ask for a meeting? And um, there's so much discussion around the sales side of the house and, and scheduling demos and things of that nature. And on LinkedIn, you know, reps are called out for how they ask. And um, it's not just on Calendly to educate this, but it's on anybody in business to talk about the best way to make an ask for anything, but specifically someone's time. Yeah. Right. The most precious commodity that we have. And so um, it's definitely been a fun journey over the last three years and in, in being on this path. And guiding guiding really the world on how to best schedule but i think that um calumny's focus is in the right place on on elevating scheduling while doing it with grace and tact and empowering users uh i mean i think that's gonna i mean i i know that it's it's um it saved me kind of time and countless emails particularly when i you know right now i'm 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 in a sort of a reasonably busy kind of period in terms of kind of like one week's quiet, then another week's kind of like kind of busy because I'm traveling to do a couple of things. And the scheduling of different sort of things in between times is just, it's, it's made things so much kind of um, so much easier. Although even though it seems to have freed up time and maybe I've just got more busy, maybe that's because I got freed up time. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, it becomes, I feel like I'm chasing my tail sometimes, but yeah. what I was going to say was that, I mean, that's, that, that's all great. And I, and, and I think it's, it's definitely an area that, Many people don't necessarily focus on, um, and they should spend more time kind of focusing on it. And particularly, you know, we're familiar in the B two C space, but we should we should think about it particularly in the B two B space because as deals get bigger and transactions get more complicated because they have more people involved and, and all these different things. Like when the complexity, when there's then the value goes up and the and the complexity it goes up in terms of number of relationships, then having a tool like this that can help coordinate and save time and effort is 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 supremely valuable. But what I was going to say I was going to say with uh, um is there anything else that we've missed out? Because like one I also wanted to hear like What's next for Calendly apart from world domination of people's kind of like scheduling and cal- calendars? Yeah, I, I would say um, in terms of what's next for Calendly, we recently acquired a company called Prelude um, that is hyper focused on the recruiting experience, the scheduling experience. There, it mm-hmm. can be quite complex for panel and sequencing interviews, and so we're focused there. 
um, on the recruiting space, but we're also focused on um, really, really taking a step back and looking at what are the core features and functionalities of our platform and how do we elevate those? Um, there are a lot of really fantastic new features coming out. So I would be amiss to, to say 2023 is going to be quite fun, but we're also working on just making sure that the tried and true capabilities are scaling wisely for our customer base. And so mm -hmm. with that, um, you know, I, I think for us, we are, we're going to keep marching forward with with scheduling at the heart of all that we do, but we're gonna to begin to focus on um, specific verticals and making sure that we're serving each of these teams exceptionally well, sales, customer experience, recruiting, um, and things of that nature, because there are different intricacies that each of those teams need to be successful. And I think we've done a good job of, of casting a very wide net, but within each of those verticals, we're gonna go deeper. We're gonna mm -hmm. give our users what they need to be even more successful on the platform. Um, and so that's, that's really where we're going next and just, consistently creating a world-class experience. I mean, that's something we'll never, we'll never trade off on. And so we've got an exciting 2023 ahead. Um, and I think you'll, you'll see more from us educating the world on how to schedule, you know, meetings in, in the best way possible, but we are a, a fun team with a phenomenal culture. And so we are very people centric and listening to our customers is, is at the top of that list. And so you'll continue to see innovation coming from that place. Um, and surprising and delighting in many ways. Awesome. And so what I wanted to do next was I wanted to sort of like zoom out a little bit. Sure. And, you know, as you alluded to, it's like we, the, um, I think we had to pivot when the pandemic came on. I think that's kind of quite a polite way of describing kind of what, what, what happened, but yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. But it's like, <laughs> it's like, you know, the last couple of years have been challenging, strange, different all of the all of the above i guess yeah but i think it's been we've seen lots of different change and and what i wanted to ask was that um what have been some of the biggest things that you've seen or learned of the last couple of years that you think mm, yeah that's definitely kind of informing how we do things sort of now and kind of will continue to form inform what we do going forward so that's a great one i think what what instantly comes to mind is um, the importance of data at the heart of all that we do. I think um, going through the pandemic and um, one of the biggest things is we had we had a lot of our team out getting sick and things of that nature, and um, we relied very heavily on notes being entered into a CRM, and um, we really started to pull out more data insights to empower for how are our health scores to inform the business on where we were going. And so data has been a, a key one. And I've seen across customer experience, the importance of data over the last three years becoming more and more clear in the different roles um, that folks are using. And then I think the second for me, and this is timely over the past year, it's been a hard one with all of these layoffs, Adrian, and it's just um, leading with where the customer is and meeting them where they are. I think I've seen a lot across a lot across LinkedIn and social social parties where we're still trying to push whatever whatever our respective product is. And it's, I think for Calendly, our core value of Start With Human has really been, you know, where is the customer at? Are we creating those personal um, relationships that drive us forward? And then, you know, we had customers back in 2020 who their businesses had to shut down or they had to reduce their, their headcount in half and things of that nature. And as they grew and, um, you know, businesses started to pick up, they said, hey, we came back because the experience that you created for us when things weren't the best. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that um, really, really meeting people where they are. And yes, we're all running businesses, but how do we be mindful and, and um, put those people at the center of it, whether they're at that same company as it rebounds or, you know, they've migrated to another. Um, those are the experiences that people remember and that they'll want to do business with you perpetually in the future. And so those would be the two things for me is, is an increased data focus over the last three years. I've definitely seen that. We've even done it. Um, and then the, the second is just being mindful. While we all, all are running businesses, we're all human. We're all trying to do our best and um, trying to make the most out of it. And so I think for me, those would be the, the top two of, of what I've seen over the past three-ish years. I mean, it's brilliant. I, I, I love the last one, which is effectively... Uh, last one in particular, rather, um, which effectively uh, sort of focuses in on that how we often talk about first impressions mattering, yeah. but we forget that last impressions matter too. 
every impression matters. No, no, and indeed, but it's it's, yeah, like, it's from a psychological perspective. You know, it's like yeah. first impressions and then whoosh, last impressions, and we tend to remember more intensely kind of what happens at the ends of these kind of different either micro yeah. bits of a relationship or even a relationship in in, in total. And it reminds me of this story that I heard from a guy called Henry Stewart, who runs a computing and training uh, com- company called Happy uh, here in the UK. And they run, he told a story about they about how they've got this philosophy about when somebody leaves the company for whatever reason, it could be um, they're just leaving or they, you know, even if they get fired for gross mm. misconduct, whatever. Um, they have this philosophy where they, they turn around and they say, well, actually, we're, even though we're, we've decided you don't want, we don't want you to be part of our company anymore, we're going to work hard for you to figure out what your next step is. And we're going to work hard to try and get you placed in, in your next role um, because they feel a responsibility to do it, regardless of how that person may or may not have acted. Um, and I just thought it was that's such a wonderful thing. Yeah, it, it's powerful. I think, you know, when, when people are in times of need, it's easy from a business standpoint to say, okay, on to the next, which customer needs us and how can we help? And I think for us over the last three years, I've really tried to guide the team on, um, take a moment to be in their shoes. What do they need? How can we help them? How do we ask those questions? And in many ways, our customers have said, Hey, can I have your manager's email? Can I, I I want to send them an email. And so I've gotten some really great emails over the, um, the last three years of just, you all have really been there. And when we said we were canceling, when we said we had something really hard and it was going to impact how we do business with you, um, it was more of, I'm really sorry to hear that. How can we best support you in the next month, in the next mm-hmm. whatever? So, and um, I guess that doesn't happen every day. And, no. and I think that's, you know, something where for our team and, and our company, that's the difference we want to make. Yes, we want to be a great um, company that provides world-class scheduling software, but we also want to be there for you as through through the wins and the challenges of your business. And um, I think we've we've really tried to go above and beyond in those categories. And so would that be your best advice for somebody that wanting to sort of like improve their customer employee experience is just the, is see the human, you know, be the human, kind of walk in their shoes, kind of like be there, do the, 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 do the utmost you can to, to help wherever and however you can. Yeah, it's start with human and and okay. really just say, you know, okay, if this customer is going to contract and or churn, um, how can we get a lot of companies, you know, brush their hands with it and, and they move on to the next one. And we say for a second, like, hey, this is really unfortunate. We'd love the opportunity to learn. But two, how can we best support you in this transition? Mm-hmm. And in many ways, if customers potentially were transitioning to a competitor, they've ended up staying with us. They're like, wow. Right. And so it's it's not just saying what's in it for me, but but how do we best support them? And that's something I often say to the team, how, how did we support them? Mm-hmm. And what did it do for the experience? And so, yeah, I would say that'd be one tip that I would, I would cascade on is in, in times of strife, take a moment to pause. Yes, we have all the things running through our mind of the impact to our business. But if we can take that 30 seconds and just pose the question of how can we best help you? A lot of folks step back and say, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Mm-hmm. And then they take a second to think about it and give you a really genuine answer. And a beautiful opportunity just to create a special moment regardless of outcome um and more often than not it served us pretty well nice so that's a kind of a, a nice kind of thing so i'm going to kind of like change tack again and kind of say okay. i've got want to ask you some punk related questions okay. before we go um so as i explained before we started kind of talking today um I've written these two books, Punk CX and Punk XL. And what I've been doing over the course of the last kind of like numerous months is asking people kind of two different questions. And the first question is, what one or two words would you use to describe a more punk approach to customer experience? What would you pick? I think the the first thing that comes to mind is don't overthink. I know that's two words, so you were gunning for one, but don't overthink it. For me, when I think about Punk CX, it's dive in get excited. And what do our customers need? So there's a bunch of words in there. 
Um, but, but it's like, you just got to start where you are. And, um, I, I think there's a lot to customer experience where you have to have the huge journey map. You have to have all of these things. And it's like, what's, if you could do one thing, what would that be? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so for me, I would say, um, get excited. What do our customers need? Jarring question. I know tough one to think through, but start small. I would definitely, I tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to hold on to don't overthink yeah. because I'm pretty sure that's, I know I've got a long list, but I'm pretty sure that's not on the list. In fact, I'm almost wow. certain it's not on the list. So you're on the list. There we go. Made it. <laughs> I've done anything right during the last 50 minutes, right? Made it <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and then the second question is, so I wrote this follow-up book called Punk XL. And it's about this idea to just to try and introduce this idea of experience leadership and how we need to think about things more holistically and a bit more in a bit more systemic and a bit more integrated kind of way. So what company or brand do you think is an experienced leader and why? Yeah, and that's a good one. I thought about this one quite a bit. And I'm not sure that that anyone sticks out as the leader. There are a lot of companies that I I think have bits and pieces of things that I really like Mm -hmm. um, in there. But I would say two companies that come to mind when I think about experienced leader, I think both internally and externally. um, Salesforce for me is one in the tech space that I I think has just been um, really powerful to Mm -hmm. see experiences they create for their teams to empower them and, and how they allow their teams to show up with their customers in meaningful ways. So um, that's one. And then um, I'll just say I'm a sucker for Zappos. I've read I've read all the books and, and things of that nature. And so I think going above and beyond, and that's very much so goes back to Adrian, the, the start with human and putting your customers first. Um, that's very much so at the essence of my leadership. And it's put our customers first, put our team first. And so those would be the two that stick out in my mind. And um, once I find that leader in the space, I'll certainly think of you and shoot you an email um, when the time comes. Awesome. Thank you for that. And one final, final, final question, which mm-hmm. because I, uh, we are, you know, we came through the pandemic and mm-hmm. we've sort of uh, navigated our way through kind of the, the majority of that. We're definitely on the tail end of it kind of right, uh, kind of right now. Um, but then we emerged into another kind of era of change uncertainty call it what you will and there's um and to try and divert ourselves from infinite doom scrolling kind of when drinking or kind of like morning coffee yeah. um i thought i'd finish lately i thought i'd finish the the uh, the podcast on on a good news story and so i've been asking people what's the most interesting positive or exciting thing that you've seen in the last week and this can be anything i remember telling somebody who got stuck and I remember telling them this story about seeing this little puppy dog lying in the window of this carpet shop as I was walking down the street. And because the window was bathed full of sunshine and it was such a warm place, the dog was like on its kind yeah. of like on its back, just kind of like basking in the sun. And I was like, that made me smile. And so that was a, that that made it into the podcast. Then. So it could be anything random. Yeah. So the the first thing that my mind goes to is I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. The one-year-old has just learned how to say hi. Right. And so we recently went to the grocery store and every single person he walked and said, hi, hi. And to see the faces light up and go, oh, hello, little one. Or, you know, this night, even some of the grumpiest people would smile and crack. I think just the simplest acts for my one-year-old of saying hi literally to every person at the grocery store just brought little bits and sparks of joy into their day. And for me, I just, I keep going back to Saturday in my head and thinking just, gosh, that was so powerful. And how often am I heads down walking in places without smiling and saying hi. And so I should be more like Kai um, and say hi. So that would be my, my spark of positivity to share with everyone. Um, My little one-year-old with his fat little face and big hands waving hi to everyone. I think that's brilliant. I love that. And yes, we should all walk up, walk more with our heads up and yeah. make eye contact and say hello to people or even just a bit of a nod and a bit of a smile and the kind of the odd hi here and there. How are you doing? Just yeah. those little connections. Yeah, they matter. They do. Katie, thank you for that. Thank you so much. That was a brilliant kind of little story to end on. And thank you also for 
sharing your time and your kind of insight and kind of, you know, and the work that you do around making scheduling just a little bit easier or not a little bit, like a whole heap easier because, um, yeah, it's annoying and it's hard and kind of to take all that kind of pain and friction away is like fair play to you. So thank you so, so, so much for that. No, it's my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate the conversation. It's been a pleasure. Wow, what a great interview. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Find out more about me and the work that I do at adrianswinsco.com. Do leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. And if you have any comments, feedback, or questions about the podcast, then feel free to send me a message to podcast at adrianswinsco.com. And do tune in again. Thanks very much.